How's it going, everyone? Hello! Hello, world! Uh-huh. How's everyone doing tonight? Me? I'm good. I mean, y'all too. I I'm not disincluding you. I'm, I mean, I'm pretty good. I almost snapped. It's good. Okay. That sounds good. Yeah. Well, okay, never mind. I'm not going to get into too much of what the last 24 hours have been like. But we started driving in the morning, so a nap was appreciated. <laughs> yeah, sorry about waking you up from that. I didn't realize that you were napping. No, no, it's okay. Shh. How are, how is it, how are you guys? Um, I'm doing pretty good. Um, I kind of lucked out and I ended up camping with some other people. And, um, one of the people who we were camping with couldn't come out. And so I just get a whole campsite to myself for a couple of days. And so I have electricity and water, which is really cool. Hey, what? That's awesome. And you're at Marion? Right. Yep. There's a little like reservoir here. It's pretty well maintained. Is it the Marion County Lake? I think it's also the Marion Reservoir. Oh. Some, some Corps of Engineers thing. Um, okay. My... Uh, sorry, if I can cut in here real quick. We've got back feed, I think, from both of you or your cameras. I told you I wouldn't really know until we went live. Um, so I if can you can do a headset. Yeah. Yeah, some headphones. Yeah, yeah I'm going to have to run and I'm going to, it'll probably take me like three minutes, but I'll go grab some. I think I can Please. do this for three minutes. What? <laughs> Nothing, you're good to go. That, that would be appreciated. Okay, peace out, guys. Right. Sorry, I, I didn't mean to cut in I there. That's okay. Um, I did my capstone for the NRES program at Marion County Lake, so I feel attached to it. How are you, David? Oh, I'm good. Uh, I'm. My mind's all over the place right now, but that's getting the stream together usually. <laughs> You're doing great. I'm sure this is gonna be great. Um, yeah. yeah. I just thought everyone well, had their DIY projects already ready. I wasn't expecting to have to, to put them all together at the last second. Yeah, I didn't uh, really understand what was happening at all. And then I was gone, and I didn't have service. And then I got back, and I'm like, oh, gosh. <laughs> so I'm glad that we're pulling through. And yeah, I need to be a good stream. Oh, absolutely. And, yeah, I'll hold off on, uh, oh, she's back. Okay. Yeah, that was a fast uh -huh. three minutes. <sighs> My, I'm pretty organized. <laughs> okay, uh, right. I'm going to check the stream real quick. Go ahead and talk between yourselves. Hello, 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 hello. All right. Hello. I can say other things, I guess. So funny. Sorry, I I just trying not to not to have back feed from this thing as well. So, okay. I thought I was hearing a little bit earlier. It must have been that. Uh, are we... Are, okay. We're not okay. We're getting there. Okay. Little by little. Journey with us people as we all become a little more okay. Um... Thanks for the encouraging message. I'm reading a book right now, and it's, it's really quite encouraging. It's just about, 
I would classify it as a book about um, mindfulness, but it, it's written from a different perspective. Anyway, it's just like little, little tiny bits of like, you can enjoy these little things, and I'm like, I will try. <laughs> That sounds pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually one that um, our boss let me. He's great taste in books and clothing. I'm not taste. entirely sure why there's. There, I'm hearing back feed on both of your ends. I'm not. Really? Hmm. Oh, I guess I can't hear. God. I'm juggling too many screens at once. Maybe. The, the robot that we're using to compile the video or whatever, um, like got a concussion, and so it, its ears are ringing. That, uh, that sounds... I mean, you just sounds... smash the computers all the time in anger, right? Like, is it a good rap? Okay. Is it, like, unbearable, or are we going to be okay? No, it, it... it should be okay. Okay. Uh, I say let's get the show on the road. Ah, screw it. Let's go with it. Why not? Cool. Okay. Um, which brings us to our next opening game for the week. Let's go. Um, this one is going to require, like, a pen and paper. I should have said that earlier to you guys. Or, like, so, what's your make in there? I should have said it earlier. <laughs> that could be used like in a DIY style to replace that um, instead of like buying something new. So, okay. So yeah. makeshift something or other. Oh, it's exactly what I specialize in. Half-baked ideas. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, so do you guys have like your pen and pencil ready? Pen and Okay. So the first one, oop. The first one is a trellis. I have to make a so, trellis? Yeah, but what could you like make a trellis with without like buying new materials for it? Or like some unconventional idea for like a trellis. So it could be like a grapevine trellis, it could be like something just like a bean, like smaller scale for beans, or um, anything like that. Oh, oh, I thought you meant like a digging trellis. That's a trap. Let's okay. Okay. We're just gonna continue my <laughs> <laughs> We'll just do it for don't, beans, because I, I, I can have an idea. This is really too amusing that I have this uh, irrigation tee that has a little bit of pipe on it, and I'm just... My idea is a little little far fetched. I'm about the only person I know who keeps like an extra hundred foot of rope around just for the hell of it. That. So. Okay. Are you guys in? I'm done. Okay. Mm. Whoever wants to go first. All right. So mine here. Let me put that up there. It's like it's made out of sticks, 
Um, and they're kind of pointed on the end so you can drive them into the ground. And then there's like a cross. And you could probably put like sticks uh, like along here if you needed more things for them to grab onto. But yeah. just some that you can make with a knife and some rope and some trees. That's great. Alright, let's see. Uh, can y'all see my... Oh, not so well, really. Ah. There it is. Sort of. So it's it looks basically... Like to... Oh my. Hold on, let's do this real quick. I don't think that really helped, did it? You can just describe like it. you're okay. a professor <laughs> with the... You know, like the elbows. All right, yeah, so let's see, right here. Yeah. We've got, I mean, these are old fence posts, because on, on the farm I used to live on, we had tons of these old ones. You'd pull up, they'd be a little bit, like, aged at the bottom, so they'd be easy to break. Uh, you put those in the ground, and then you run, uh, basically, crisscrossing rope across, and you can use it for beans. You can use it for any plant you want, and they'll just grow up it. It's basically a makeshift rope trellis. Beautiful, amazing, nice. firing. Yeah. Beautiful. I think those are both really good, but yeah, like, I feel like sticks, rope, nine. <laughs> well, you guys have some trellises in your garden, don't you, that you've made from some unconventional things? Uh, yeah, we have some trellises from old, uh, like, I think technically it's hog wire, it's the, like, larger, uh, graded uh, panels that we've used T-posts and then lean them up against. We also, we do have a rope trellis, um, for the beans. It's just like pull, pull, rope, um, yeah, stuff like that. And then we also just have beans crawling up, like, fences and stuff, like, so... <laughs> Yeah, if anybody has yeah, any you know, conventional like ideas. For a trellis to do, like corn. Sorry, what? What? what that was. Somebody got us today. Oh, 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 oh. I was, I was saying. So oh, was Um, But can't you use, like, other plants and trellis, like corn? Like, isn't that yeah. a really possible technique to use corn as the trellis for the beans and then, like, squash? You got your three sisters and full party. Yeah, yeah, corn is a really good uh, trellis for the three sisters, yeah. So, biodegradable trellises, too. Uh, um, yeah. What were you saying, David? Uh, I was just saying that if uh, anybody in chat wants to throw up ideas, uh, be more than, more than welcome to. And then, uh, I mean, if you want to be a little bit vague, you can have us try and guess at what exactly you mean. But... Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, give it, get through us they ideas. Can post a photo in chat? Um, they, they can post links, but they can't post a photo, so you'd have to uh, upload it to, like, but... Imgur. Well, actually, I have no uh, idea. I don't know. I don't think you can, like, add a, add that. Yeah. Seems like that. Just comment on stuff if you have any ideas. Hold on. <laughs> Alright, I have my drawing done for this one. Oh, you're all done already? <laughs> oh yeah, it's, my, mine's pretty, pretty rudimentary. I mean, literally anything that can hold water is a watering can. So... I mean, you are correct. I, I mean, go ahead, Amelia. If you're ready to show, go ahead. Oh, okay. Do, 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 do. So it's in like a Folgers can, one of those red and black ones, and then you tip it in the pot, and there's some holes, and it goes bloop, 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 and then you tip it back up, and it just it goes bloop, so that's my watering can. I think Folgers cans also have like a little, like it's not a perfect cylinder, it has grips on one side, so that might help. Yeah, that's a good one. Good idea. David seems like he's putting a lot of work into this one, so I'm kind of like, ooh. Sort of. What's it gonna be? Ooh. I right. mean, it's, it's an oldie but a goodie. 
It's just a boot. You know, just reuse it a couple oh, pairs of boots. It'll hold water. They're waterproof. That means they'll hold water. And then you pour them, you just pour it out? Yeah. Like, yeah, out of the shop? Then when it stops functioning as a watering can, you use it as a planter. I mean, it's just the uses never end. I and saw then... the cutest birdhouse the other day out of, like, an old Columbia boot. Oh, my gosh. When my boots die, I'm going to turn them into birdhouse. Yeah, I've actually, I've used uh, just like a milk jug in the past and poked holes in it, but you kind of have to like squeeze it in order to get it to work. It's flawed, but I'm going to work. But was it a requirement to have a pour spout? That same thing happened where you both talked at the same time and I just went. Sorry, Um, man. Uh, I think David said something about a pour spout, though, so, yeah, that, I think that's important with a watering can. Not necessarily all the time, but it is good to have more of, like, a rain effect than, like, pouring a bunch of water at once, because that can move the soil more. So, but also, sometimes it doesn't really matter as much as others, so. I just kicked when, the dirt back in the When you're first planting something, like a baby plant, that you just transplanted, is that when you, like, really need to be careful about not doing a flood and doing, like, a drizzle? Yeah. Yeah. If there, I feel like, uh, when there's not as much of a root system and the plant isn't as stable, and also just generally, like, loose soil, like, if it's really compacted or really clay-heavy soil, you can probably pour it on there okay, but if it's, like, really loose and it's going to move a lot... Um, you generally just want to reduce moving the soil as much as possible. But, yeah, good, great. I'm going to do the next one. Hey, Justice, uh, if you want to participate in coming up with ideas, uh, you're more than welcome to. Calling him out, my goodness. I wasn't calling him out, I was telling him to participate. (laughs) <laughs> just kidding justice <laughs> uh the next one is a fence like you can do anything here oh. how what does it need to be able to stop yeah. mm, that's a good question I would say that we're just we'll just do like a small fence like a rabbit fence okay Something like that. Like, it doesn't have to be, like, people height. It could be shorter. So this isn't, like, a trunk wall. It's more like a chicken lunch. Or not a chicken. Chicken wall. Yeah. No. Yeah. Okay, sorry. How, how tall is that? I was... Uh, I mean, Justice has offered to join us on Skype. Uh, do we want to do we want to test the waters and see if the the system can handle it, or should we kind of hold off? I say, I let's do it. But if it if it terrifies you, since you're the one that has to deal with all the tech failures, then he can also just like text you um, photos of his drawings and you can print them. Um, I can I can add him in without too much issue. It's just gonna take a second. Oh, yeah. Add it in, then. Okay. Uh, I'm all for that. Justice, uh, go ahead and add... Uh, tell me what you're, like, uh, actually... Do you know how to whisper on Twitch? Does he have your phone number? Oh, yeah. You can also just contact me via the group name. <laughs> that would be absolutely fine. And that way we're not... Uh... <laughs> okay. No worries. Uh, just send me your your like Skype username on uh, on uh, the group mate, and then I'll add you to the call. All right. Well, looks like we're gonna use the the force space today. Yay! Okay. Well, um, I'm guessing okay. that Amelia's drawing her picture. Oh yeah, that's what's going on. Okay. Um. So maybe. If Justice can get on in time, otherwise he can join in on the next one. There's still a couple, so. 
I mean, fences are kind of hard because, like, a yeah, nice it has fence... to like work. Exactly. I and... I have I have an idea. For one. I can start with all stalking. All well, right. I mean, I've got ideas, so, but they're all like, oh. No, go on, David. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Oh. Do 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 do. This is my fence. It's made out of like a door that you just stick in the ground a little bit, and there's like another one to the side. I okay. saw someone make a wall out of that once, and it looked horrible, but it looked like it also worked, so. Yeah. It could be cute. You, I feel like if you, you could give it a... It gives you a lot of solid space, like you could paint on it really well or something yeah. like that. Oh, it'd be cool to do, like, murals on it. Yeah, like it's yeah. Like a good flat surface for that. Probably yeah. not just as doors stuck in the ground, but... Yeah. Oh wait, did you were talking? <laughs> I had that idea, just a bunch of cardboard. What doors. the doors? Yeah, no, I loved it. I was gonna do that, uh, but I don't have an what? idea. <laughs> what really? Yeah. Um, <laughs> All the things in the world. Oh, that's, junkyards. That's like pretty funny. Oh yeah. I'm so I, I don't have a. I don't have anything done. I'm. I'm trying to contact Justice here. Uh, I don't know if he's trying to talk to me or what the deal is going to be. Okay. Um. Uh, so. let's see. Oh wait. Uh, nope. That's. Why? Why Skype? Why you gotta be problematic? We just wanna have more friends, Skype. What? What do you have against Well, I I haven't heard anything from Justice, so I don't know if he. Uh... Oh. Oh, okay. There he is. Finally. Wonderful. Let's add a person. We're gonna see how much my computers don't like this. It'll be great. We're gonna get back, Pete. It'll be great. It's a sign of progress. Okay. Ah, I can't see who you. I can't see the pictures. Like it just won't show me. Um. <laughs> Justice, what's like the live username on here? Like somebody's got like uh, justice.dent99. Send me that. Unless that's you, and then that's sorry. Alright. You can bleep it out, at least in the edited version, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can, I can always add a nice little bleep. And this is, I'll probably just add a nice little technical difficulties uh, soundtrack going on right now. Oh yeah, we have a little soundtrack and, uh, like, picture that we'll put on the YouTube version of this. Oh, yeah, oh, I, I have another business idea. idea. What's that? Um, this isn't actually my idea, I'm stealing it from Carol Barda. Woo! Cool lady. Um... But I went to one of her little talks once, and she was ranting about how much she did and how much she like, used her house, the pathway, to, like, mold oh, okay, the yard. And so they would troll through her yard, drunk late at night, and so she put, like, raspberry bushes around the perimeter of her yard, hoping that they would just, like, poke themselves and then turn around. Apparently they didn't, but you could try it. Hi, hi, everyone. Justin. Say hi to Skype. Hi. Or, hi, Skype. My god. I just Stop said to say hello to Skype. I'm an idiot. Do you have a best idea, Justice? Um, well, what exactly are you attempting to do with it? We're going for just, like, a short fence, probably, to deter, like, rabbits. Okay, so what I've got out in the garden, um, like, 
a hundred yards from me or something like that. You just use some standard T posts and uh, suspended chicken wire from them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's pretty close to what ours is too. We had actually old wood from pallets at the neighbors. So I beat those into the ground, and then we have chicken wire running right along them. But okay. yeah. Uh, I guess you're not super worried about deer and stuff, so you wouldn't want, need to make it any higher. Yeah, I think um, we're just, yeah, basic fence, but do you have any deer fence ideas? Uh, deer fence is a lot more work than I want to make if we're not really dealing with deer, so yeah. it's much easier just to run chili peppers on everything anyway. Yep. Did you get it figured out, Yes, he is, he is on screen. He's on the stream now. Okay. Hey, hey, Twitch. Hello. You're, yeah. you're the only one who hasn't done a fence idea, David. <laughs> Just say something. Rocks. Anything. Big rocks. Big, okay. Oh. <laughs> I don't hate it. We live in a good place for that. Oh, there we go. That's what I wanted. <sighs> I mean, um, when I was driving around earlier trying to find rocks for the planters, uh, I mean, I was able to see a lot of big stuff just kind of off the side of the road that you could basically take. So it may or may not work. I mean, if you want to build a rock fence, like the traditional way, is just use all of the rocks that were in your, your field that you just dug up when you plowed it. That's just where they all came from. Yeah. How um, big is this and oh. where is it, by the way, so that I'm up to speed? What? The what? How big is this garden we're talking about here? Oh, it's, it's just a magic. Okay. It's just uh, like, right. the, the idea of the game is basically like, so you don't want to buy something new, what's like just a DIY that you could have around your house, or something like that, that you could do instead. So, okay. you need materials. So the next one is a plant pot, and then double coins if you can think of something for a saucer, which we're not really having coins, so... That doesn't make sense, but I just, I just wanted, wanted to put in a flying saucer picture. <laughs> oh, uh... The, the saucer's the thing under the plant that catches water, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Uh, and the shared screen is actually just all of us on Skype uh, right now, so... Okay. Cool. Yeah, you, you, you might want to reshare your screen, screen Mary. Okay. okay. I'm just, just pressing, pressing random, random buttons. buttons. I don't, I don't play, play with Skype a lot. Yeah, don't, don't worry. <laughs> I've got everything I need for you, Justice. You're good. All right, cool. Uh, have you adjusted your resolution at all lately? No. Okay. I like, I like my, my resolution. It is. I have a lot of resolution for my resolution if it boils nope. right down to it. Well, now I've got. Now I can see the whole screen. I can see you moving me around. Hey. Your tabs are showing. Awesome. A plant pot. Ooh. Yeah. This is my kind of thing. Planting pot. I mean, I wish. Somebody was going to go there. It might as well be me. Um. Do you guys need more time? Do you have any? Um, oh. Well, oh, I've got one sitting out. Um, so my dad made my mother this nice sign. <laughs> um, starting out of like a chopped in half log that we well, chopped in half and burned into it. Huh? Um, over there she put a uh, old, old metal toy Tonka truck, filled it up with dirt, and then sealed the back end with some like packed rocks so it had some drainage and then planted flowers in it and it sits next to the sign over there and it looks really cool that's so that's, cute that's so cute my yeah. heart <sighs> I think that's better than the bathtub guy um, the traditional reused plant pot around here is like old cow mineral tubs lots of things have been planted in old cow mineral tubs yeah um 
tires. I have a bunch of pepper plants and some tires back there right now. Um, if I could figure out a way to put it on my phone and like also maintain video feed, I would just like show people. But I don't, and that sounds like a lot of work. So unless you really want me to, then I'll do it. But I don't. Yeah, we'll take your word for it. Well, maybe, but, you, maybe some other time we could do yeah. a just garden tour or something. That would be cool. Good, because oh, I have, like cool. I am absurdly proud of it right now. Yeah, so, so fantastic. You we got should. A we did like a whole episode of like garden tours, but we should do like a part soon. Okay. Um. So I've also got. Uh, but you just take uh, you take an old tire. We used to paint them white for less heat retention. Um, just set them on their side on the ground on the ground and fill them up with dirt so it's kind of raised. And then plant like pepper plants. Or I've got a blueberry bush that's really really dead back there. Or uh, cucumbers with cucumber plants. And if you put uh, like two tires side by side, so four tires, one he two here, two here, stretch. Bend a cow panel in half between the two of them for the runners, and you'll have just like this nice little trellis archway that just drips cucumbers all summer. You can do it with cantaloupe too. We've got some cantaloupe back there, but you've got to go in and uh, once the cantaloupe starts to develop, you have to use like pantyhose or something, some pliable cloth like that to keep them from getting too heavy and falling off the plant, basically. And hopefully. Yeah. That will keep the raccoons and the possums from eating all of my cantaloupes because that has uh, been a significant problem. Yeah, I wouldn't guarantee that. that. They're crafty. Are raccoons are little turds. Absolutely. Well, I don't know. I there was start hanging my trash because they keep getting into it. Like I was, like I didn't have problems, and then like halfway through this ordeal, they started deciding they wanted to eat my like, Hmm. I've had, I don't know, I think we've gotten them pretty well cleared out for the most part, or at least they don't come around the house, because there was kind of a culling um, before we got laying hens, because I do not, we do not tolerate polyphages around here. Like, my laying chickens are like the greatest thing ever, and any threat to their safety is immediately terminated with extreme prejudice. We don't tolerate this nonsense over here. I've got all yeah. these pretty eggs wonderful and you guys were giving me guff about talking about killing like raccoons and possums you know we had two raccoons actually come through in the front yard a couple days ago and of course we were really nervous because the chickens are right uh over there um and so we set out two live traps and one of the live traps the door closed and the food got eaten and the bars were bent, but there was nothing in there. And then the other life trap had a possum in them. So we have been unsuccessful. In that sounds about right. I've seen uh, raccoons like take tufts of grass from the yard and stuff them under the pressure plates to live traps so they could just go in there and eat the food and come out. That, that makes sense because there was like a lot of, um, we had some like potting mix that was had a lot of roots in it that was just kind of like lying on the ground over there and they had clearly like ripped some of it and thrown it into the live trap and we were like what were they doing that's they're... yes they're very crafty and make very uh -huh. nice hats because they'll reach through um if you don't put your chickens up at night like we have all these meat chickens out back that are going to um get put in the freezer come like this weekend um, what raccoons will do is that they'll actually like if they're too if the chickens are too stupid to move like these meat chickens are, um, they'll actually reach through the chicken wire and pluck their heads off and then like wonder wait why did I just do that I can't get any of the chicken out of this now and they just pluck the heads right off. Yeah. That's why we don't tolerate raccoons. Yeah. Anyways, does anybody have any other plant pot ideas? <laughs> There we go. Mason jars. Literally my excuse for everything garden related. Mason jars. That's fun. Um, yeah. I'm in another Folgers can. I don't drink coffee, so I don't know where I'm getting all these Folgers cans. But, um, I know, I know where you're getting them from. Where you put the plant, 
and then you drill holes in it, and then this is the saucer, and I, I did this once before, and I didn't, like, put enough space between these two, and it kind of got gross down here. So these are, like, pennies or something, so that the water has some room. Good plan. I would You're say the only, uh, thing about, uh, a mason jar is that you have to be careful about root rot if there's no holes in the bottom. Yeah, exactly. But, it's... It's for um, like per, it's for annual stuff, not not for stuff that with the the roots that grow deep. Like if you want to yeah. go and get like the annual flowers, you can grow them absolutely fine in uh, a mason jar. But yeah, perennials not great. I'll yeah. admit that. Yeah, just as like a message to folks to think about. Um. Okay, I'm just gonna move on to the next one. A shovel or a trowel? Does anybody know where I can get my hands on some obsidian around here? Um, we're not exactly the most... If you said obsidian like I think you did, we're not exactly the most volcanically active geographical regions. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know if you've noticed the distinct lack of volcanoes around here. What? what you talking about? If you dig straight down with diamonds in your inventory, you can find some lava. That is a complete myth. Do not perpetuate the myth that diamonds spawn near lava. Don't do that. No, that's not cool. no, I meant like if you had them in your inventory and you decided to dig, that's when you find them. See, I swear that's true. That yeah. there's no way you will not convince me that it doesn't like just respawn as soon as it has. Like, hey, they have literally everything nice. In yeah, yeah. Right now. What yeah. if we just took it from them? Put some lava right behind the block they want to take. Yeah. <laughs> Is it still sharing my screen? Yes. It's about I don't see it right now I think I keep pressing something and ruining it and I'm sorry I just showed up and I'm already making everything harder for everyone I'm so sorry not justice don't worry you're not changing anything well, at least not for the stream at least I can still see everything okay. that's okay um the share screen button justice is the one that's like a box and then another box in between the chat and the heart if that's what you keep pressing that probably what it is. Yes. Oops. Is it... Do you guys see mine now? Oh, Matt killed it. <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, there it is. All right. There we go. That's what I wanted. All right. I guess I'll start on this one, and it, again, this is actually something we did, sort of, on a Philmont hike a long, long time ago. It literally, we took a log, we took a hatchet, and we hacked the end off until it was basically just sharp on one side, and you could literally just jam it in the ground and leverage dirt out of the ground, and it made a pretty decently rudimentary hole. And I will not tell you what that hole was for, but it worked. That was my idea. I was going to make a poop shovel out of pointed stick. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is why I just go everywhere with shovel. my entrenching tool. Good. Yeah. I don't, know. I don't know that I'm environmentally conscious enough to just not go buy a shovel unless I'm really desperate. Yeah, I, I feel like... Like, listen... Humans do not have a whole lot of evolutionary advantages, but tools are one of them, and I intend to use that to the fullest of my ability. Look, I'll yeah. tell you right now that if you're hiking 100 miles and you have to limit weight and you're like, I can take a hatchet, or I could take a shovel, or I could take both, you're going to say, screw the shovel and make a poop shovel out of a stick every time. That's fine. No, that's understandable. I, I that's take different. I the shovel and I leave the hatchet. We have different priorities here. I don't know, you can, like, make more tools with a hatchet if you need to. I think that's there what seals go. the hatchet deal for me. 
<laughs> For me, I mean, it'd probably be way actions are a lot heavier. I don't know, that's like... That's just a pound of usefulness. Really. It it right it. You just look so cool carrying I'm not, it. I'm not carrying a 50 pound pack. I mean... I would, maybe, depending. Uh, Alright, enough about poop shovels. Are we good? Any, uh, any other ones? Or are we on to the last one? Since David took my pointed stick, I made a pointed rock. Okay. <laughs> that was my obsidian joke, actually. Sharp, sharp rock. Uh, okay. Uh. Pruners. Not necessarily like pruners, but like what could you use instead of pruners, I suppose. Well, that's a hard one. A, a knife? I mean, my mother always hated me for doing this, but I absolutely used whatever scissors were available as opposed to shears. You, you well, find a force, they'll, they'll cut through anything. I don't know that we're, that these answers are necessarily in the spirit of the question being asked, I, have, I will say. Right, I don't know. Fine. I'm gonna use my bare fists. Probably hmm. horrible for the tree, but I mean, it cuts the tree down just fine. You know, it's just as good as a stick. Does okay. So say I have pruners. It makes like a really pretty cut in the tree, and then let's say another branch. I go and I snap it. I do the whole bend and twisty thing, and I eventually get it free. And so that one's all janky. Does that hurt the tree more if it's not as clean of a cut? It could theoretically, yeah, it could expose it to more uh, pathogens and stuff. Especially because with, it's like, more the, surface area. Yeah, yeah, and it's. Uh, I feel like there's also something about like. Uh, Yeah, I guess it's a surface area. I'm trying to think of another point, but it's not coming together. <laughs> I mean, if you're careful, you could just take two rocks, get one of them to kind of pointy, and just keep jamming them together until whatever you're trying to prune is pruned. It's yeah. not not great. No, you, just but... you could always just assemble primitive stone tools. Exactly. Do you think if someone wanted to, they could bite? Stick. If they had very good teeth, <laughs> that that makes I think me that cringe also just thinking about that. Having a, a uneven and scraggly cr cut could um, like be more welcoming to like depending on the size, but like an insect or a boar that might makes more a lot be of sense. Like, yeah, hey. more like a home. Yeah. So, yeah, primitive stone tools. I just thought, why not add that one? And why I think not? that's Such a good Pokemon. Stay, stay off my keyboard. No, no. You're not typing silly things into Twitch. Uh-oh. All right. Come on. Pay the tax. Chat tax? All right. Exactly. This is, Fran this is Franklin. <gasps> He's staying. <laughs> He's, getting, He's a rehabilitated barn cat. He's getting shipped off to my grandmother's. Like, literally, not like metaphorically, like, literally off to my grandmother's here before too long. But he likes to come bother me. As with every other cat in this house, and I'm surprised we haven't seen more of them. That's adorable. How many cats are at your house? Um, inside, just three. Counting this, counting that guy. Um, there are, in fact, way, way more outside. And anyone who comes to my house not only gets one, for virtue of coming out, but is also get one and get one free. So, just take as many as you want. We're just drowning in kittens, and we have like two or three more that are pregnant. One that just gave birth. There are like five litters out here. We need rid of like all of them. Uh, just real quickly, I'm gonna mitigate. I'm gonna mitigate. I'm gonna migrate us over to the discussion view. Justice, you're not on that view just yet. Uh, give me ten seconds to make some changes. Sure. Just give everybody a break from looking at me. It's bothering me that I trimmed my bangs and there's still a couple hairs. 
I always, it's I just feel like that's how charming bangs goes to trim them and then you spend the rest of the like month cutting extra what, hairs. What's well, a trim? And, and then you have to cut it again. It's ridiculous. Hey, be nice. Ah, right, cool. All right, we're good. Um, I don't know. All right, so that was that was fun. I liked it. Good idea, Mary. Better better than our I think our previous idea. Yeah, I think that was better than our other idea. <laughs> oh, okay. That's good to hear. What was the I, other I, idea? I don't know. So huh? the idea that we had leading up to this was an idea called DIY so expensive, and it was basically just finding uh, like DIY projects that Stop. people spent way more like showing something that people made and then seeing if it was more or less expensive than like the store bought equivalent mm. because a lot of DIY stuff ends up costing you way more than you think it would so I don't know I feel like I'd be pr I feel like I'd be pretty good at that around here there's a uh, I've got a, like a whole hog waterer that was constructed for free unless you want to count wire on the MIG welder Yeah, I, I feel like DIY is like a really great way to make marketing more accessible because I feel like there's a lot of like really cute stuff that you could go and buy, but there's a lot of like probably less cute but very functional things just like around that I think are really important. So, uh, yeah, it was just going to be like it was, I was trying to research it and my computer sucks and no, nope, it was going to take way too long. So, um, yeah. <laughs> all right, cool. That's fair. Um, all right, so uh, do we want to move on to the DIY projects, or do we want to talk about something else for a little while? Um, do we have anything to really talk about? I think we're ready to get our hands dirty. I think so, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so how about um, I do the, the planters? And then while I get that cleaned up, we'll do your, we'll do your, uh, you can show off the, the, uh, the irrigation and then we'll come back and we'll do my last project. So you're saying okay? me go first? No, no, I'll go first you're and then you second. go, you go okay. second and then I'll, I'll, I'll finish up with my super janky stuff. Gotcha. Gotcha. Chew on that. Okay, um, and screech. No, 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 no. There we go. Okay. Uh, you guys are probably gonna have to check out the Skype in order to see this. Okay. And then let me know if the. I see. Can we actually? Everyone can see me. Okay, that's not so bad. Um, it's all right. Is it possible? Maybe. What's up? Maybe like lower your camera down. Yeah. I see. I see like up to the bottom of your. Arm. Oh oh um. N other camera. The not the ECM camera. Oh yeah. Hold on. That well, I think you guys see me a little better. Ah oh, yes. There we go. Yeah, this one not the. Uh, not this one, because this one's too far away. I don't want to try and adjust it, and then I'll do all the rethink, and eh. It's a, it's a big pain in the foot. All right, so DIY bucket planters. If you have buckets laying around, you've got yourself a really easy, compact way to plant crops. So this is great for people who are extremely limited on space, uh, like apartments. Uh, if you have a balcony, you can plant three or four things and not ever have to worry about uh, where to put it. Just stick them outside and you can have tomatoes or peppers or any number of crops. Um, so yeah, I guess we'll get started. So the first thing, you want a bucket, you can use the taller one. I've got these, uh, these shorter ones because uh, those are the only, I honestly, I don't know why I don't have a taller one, but these will do nicely. Um, okay, so the first thing we're going to do, you're going to want to take a, uh, a power drill, 
you're gonna want to get I don't know pick a good size like a uh, drill bolt or I, I don't know y'all are gonna have to make me or I, I fail at words a lot so bit. help me out drill bit thank you yep okay so you're gonna want to take uh, your drill bit and drill I don't know half a dozen eight holes in here you can do it haphazardly you can do it uh, you know however nicely you want just as long as there's good drainage because we don't want water to be in the bottom of the, the bucket, like Mary said earlier regarding the mason jar uh, plant pot. And if you guys have any points, any tips, any questions, feel free to pop right in anytime. I'll, I'll wait till you're done here. Like, I have a pretty solid tip for the peak. Um, okay, so, yeah. if you don't have a gallon or some buckets lying around, they're really easy to find. Uh, you can go and ask restaurants for five-gallon buckets, oh. and most of them would give them to you for free. Um, not all restaurants use them, but, like, Panda Express, their sauce comes in it, or certain burger joints, their pickles comes in five-gallon buckets, and so if you go... And they're like, hey, can I have your five-gallon bucket that you're going to throw out? They're like, yeah, take it. Like, we didn't want to wash it anyway. Um, Freddy's is really good. Uh, or if you want Hot the smaller cow. ones. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was like three. Um, or if you want the smaller ones that David's using, um, the bakery department at Dylan's is really solid. Like... They they get a lot of stuff in buckets. Oh, and don't get they're just everywhere, everywhere. Just go and ask. We'll get a few knows, but I recommend it. Yeah. By the way, some of those buckets that you uh, that you left down there, they still have food in them. So that was a nice little surprise. Woo! <laughs> don't love that pickle smell. <laughs> I think I just I got think used one of them to was my chocolate pudding. No, it was, it was chocolate, chocolate pudding frost. then. It was frosted. It didn't start that way. I feel like that's a little <laughs> less bad. Okay. All right. So after you've drilled your holes, I mean, it's nothing too crazy. Like I said, just uh, a few holes. I have seven there because it looks nice. Um, I have always put rocks at the bottom of my of my uh, my planters of any plant pot and I, I do it mainly because it helps drainage just a little bit now I don't know if you actually have to do it but I'm going to because I always have um, it just also helps that moist keep, uh, keep the moisture like separated from the dirt so it doesn't get trapped at the bottom because while this should drain out most of the water that accumulates at the bottom it won't be perfect so I always just do a, a nice short layer of rocks at the bottom of everything I do highway and I found a spot on the side of the road that had a bunch of rocks falling off the side of a cliff because we're in the foothills area and that was it I just grabbed rocks from there so you can literally get rocks from anywhere it's great okay so after you get your, your rocks in there if you want to uh, you want to take your dirt you can buy like potting soil um, and other such good dirt like that from uh, your local hardware stores, from garden stores, Lowe's, all that kind of stuff. Um, I didn't have time to do that, so I went and dug uh, dirt out of the ground. And so I have this really nice, rich soil. Um, so that's what I'm going to use. And I'm going to fill up the bucket to probably just about halfway. And if anybody else, like has any any good dirt tips here I would appreciate that because me and dirt I just slap it in a bucket oftentimes and I go from there just make sure it's good dirt um, I have had some fantastic success and watch your fertilizer um, I've had some fantastic success uh, with worm castings Heck yeah. uh, so my peppers were 
uh, getting it were burning up because we used uh, chicken litter uh, from Dad's farm operation to and sowed it throughout the whole garden for fertilizer. Well, that's not good for pepper plants. It's too high. Um, so they weren't doing very well. Well, we slopped some worm castings on them, and like a week later, they're doing fine now. I've even got some uh, banana peppers on the way. I'm waiting for my cayennes to, to spring out by the dozen, but um, I've got some banana peppers on the way, so I'm pretty happy about that. If you need some worm castings, we don't have a lot here, but we have like half a five gallon because we have a little worm bin all in. How do you how do you uh, harvest those from worm bins exactly? Yeah, from what I understand, we've never harvested. I know how to get the juice. Kind of let it go. The juice is the easiest part, but from what I've read online, you just kind of have to like get another bucket and like just filter through it and put the worms in the new one and the dirt in the other one. Oh, okay. Actually, so um, the th I was looking at doing some vermiculture. And like they had a three-tiered, uh, like a bucket system, and I think it was for that because um, if you put like the castings and stuff when it gets to that point, uh, like below, like in the second tier, they'll travel up to the top tier, and then you can just take the castings with all the worms out of it out of the out of the middle, and then all the juices, of course, in the bottom. Huh. Interesting. But the, I don't know why it worked. Um, I'd love to know the chemical processes going on, but I can't believe that that by itself saved those peppers from burning up like that. I planted like uh, I planted emergency peppers in some of the tires. That's why they're out there because I thought none of them were going to make it, and now I'm just going to have lots and lots of peppers, which is a good problem to have. Uh, um, from my I'll understanding, castings are so good. Just to, it's like compost. It's just got lots of nutrients in it. Other plants, though. Mm. There's a another thing to go into that. So my garden is done. We decided to do by the square foot this year, which we had never tried. Um, like you can fit a lot of plants into one of those buckets. Like probably, if I wanted to plant green beans in those, assuming that there was enough uh, root space, um, in one square foot, which is probably like at least that in one of those buckets that over there that David's got, you could oh, yeah. fit, like, 16 green bean plants in it. If you fertilized it properly. That's, I think it's, like, 16 to 18 is how many we have, and they're, like, taking over. They are so big and bushy, they're, like, keeping my uh, beets, because I did some uh, intercropping, or companion planting, that's, that's the other term for it. The, they like each other, but the beets, the uh, beans have gotten so big that they're starting to overshadow the beets. So you need to tie them up so that they don't do that. But if you did it in a bucket, it wouldn't really matter. But you can get a lot of plants into one of those if you know how to structure them properly. Nice, yeah. Okay, so I've got the dirt. I've got it filled up about halfway here. Now, if you were going to add like uh, the 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 worm droppings, or I, I have already met forgot what that word was. Casting. Um, worm castings, thank you. Uh, or you're going to add fertilizer or lime. This would be the time to add it because we don't want to add it directly onto the roots because we'll possibly burn the roots like Justice was saying with his uh, manure. Uh, so we want to add it to the layer of dirt that's going to be underneath the plant so it can draw it up but it doesn't necessarily get surrounded by it immediately. Um, so if I had any kind of fertilizer, I would add it now. I don't. This was uh, kind of real last second for me to put together, so I didn't have time to get everything I needed. Um, but yeah, you take it, you just you mix it right in. Uh, you can use a trowel, you can use your hands and then wash thoroughly afterwards, but yeah. Oh, fantastic. I have bugs in here. That's good. That's good soil, actually. What kind of bugs? It's just a beetle. But he's been sitting in a bucket getting crushed by dirt for the last couple of hours, so he's a hardy one. Um, I, I was going to make a comment. I was going to say that um, I think if you want to use the, uh, like, dirt from out in your soil, dirt from out in your yard, I mean, uh, in a five-gallon bucket for a container, like, pests are something to be more aware of, but it also has to do with I think that you definitely want to add that layer of rocks um, because 
the water table is quite different when you look at the um, topsoil where it's quite a lot of feet down versus like um, the limited space. So it's much more likely to uh, get like water bound when you have all that water in a small space. So having really good drainage um, or just being sure to use like pine soil because it's much lighter is important. So that's all. I appreciate it. Is that my answer? Yeah. 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 Just like the drainage is really important to pay attention to when it's the soil because it's much heavier. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, I should mention that when you put the soil in your bucket, don't mash it down. Just let it sit as is. As you water the plant over time, the soil will settle, um, but it'll settle naturally to the point where it's not crushing the roots. If you press the soil down, the roots won't be able to penetrate as easily, and it'll make it a lot harder for your plant to actually grow properly. So everything here is basically throw it in a bucket, don't do much else than that. Literally, it's just throw it in a bucket. Okay. So once we have uh, our, if we add our fertilizer and everything, we've got half of our bucket going here. Go ahead and put your plant in. Uh, just rest it on top of the soil that you have there. And then we're gonna take more of the soil that we collected or you have in a, in a soil bag and we're going to put it around it and again we're not going to press it in because we don't want that soil to get we don't want to crush the roots we don't want to do anything that's going to try and inhibit um, what kind of uh, or the root growth so I'll just go ahead and do that I'll chime in if I'm doing something wrong because I can always be doing something wrong mm -hmm. if, if you, you want, want a vocab term, term that Smushing the soil down is technically called compaction, which is like the one thing that I remember from my soils class. Oh, yeah. Nice. That's cool. And it's very difficult to fix in like yards and gardens and stuff if you get too much of it. I would also imagine that that's a big problem with uh, like larger agricultural things where you use oh, yeah. a tractor. Because those are really heavy. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's why, um, yeah, my dad specifically, like, was telling me, because I went over and spread some, some of that said manure over his uh, organic plots, um, to go within, I tried to go w always within the same tracks to minimize that compaction, because basically what you've got to do if you have too much compaction for proper soil drainage is you have to take a ripper, um, with like four long tines and just rip all of the soil up, like, to a depth of like three feet, three or four feet or something. And it's just a pain, and you don't want to do that. So minimize your compaction. It is also why you should not park cars in your yard all the time, because that <laughs> compaction will ruin your foundation. All of the all of the houses on my street, um, that are next to my house, that have all of the that is next to the uh, football stadium, all have people pay to park in their yard, and all that soil compacts and has ruined all of their foundation. So they spend all the money that they make on parking in fixing their foundations for soil compaction. Oh, that really sucks. Yeah, um, oh. there is in like a smaller farm scale, one permaculture thing that I've heard repeated by a lot of folks, um, like, like potato forks in order to aerate the soil is something that a lot of um, like small scale, and I don't know about in containers, but uh, like potato forks which have the like really four or five really big times. There's a term for it, but like you can go and you can kind of just chunk it, um, which isn't going to solve all of your compaction problems, but it might help get some oxygen to roots. We should make like hot air balloon tractors that uh -huh. just like float over the field and they like got the I can't. How how many balloons? How much cubic feet of helium would you need to carry like a disker or something uh, behind it? Too much. These are. I kind of I kind of imagine it like to pull things. That it's like there's a rope at the other end and a motor like pulling it this way. But I think you need like a really big balloon for that for the weight. Yeah, that'd be rough. I mean, I've Goodness. seen how many balloons that guy in the lawn chair had to have to lift himself off of the ground a good distance. 
Oh, I'm thinking like a hot air balloon. I don't know. There's not. I guess you wouldn't have to have it like too far off the ground. Yeah. The, really, the best solution is like hovercraft. Somebody just needs to invent hovercraft, and then we won't have to worry about this. Or maybe we could like lasso a cloud and just like pull up on the rope and like swing above the crops like Tarzan. It's a possibility. Probably. Start working on it. Make it so. Alright. Good idea. So now, if you're using a lot smaller tomato plants, we're actually using some tomato plants here that are quite far along, thank you Mary. Um, uh, you don't want to cover up much of the stem. And this one we can probably go a little higher. Um, but I think you want to cover from basically where the roots start. I think you want to go one to two inches. Uh, and cover with dirt. That'll help keep stability on the, the tomato plant going up. But it's going to vary by plant absolutely. So you may want to, you know, if you're wanting to plant peppers, uh, I can't tell you exactly how you want to plant peppers. So you may want to have a look up a guide and see exactly how you want to plant that. Uh, so once Tim, you've done that, uh, also, oh, sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say tomatoes are kind of special, that they will, you can plant them deeper and they'll just grow adventitious roots out their stem. But there's a lot of plants that aren't like that, so you should check. Um, I don't know. Peppers might do that. They're awful closely related. Yeah. I'm not, I've never seen a pepper do it, but I don't know. I'm just postulating. I have absolutely no idea. No, I don't know either. It's it's worth a Google. It's <laughs> also, um, uh, so if you are a smoker, you should wash your hands before handling pepper and tomato plants because um, tobacco is a nightshade and tobacco mosaic virus and other nasty things can like sometimes according to kind of urban legend or like common common wisdom um, can it get onto your hands you can spread diseases from your uh, cigarettes to your tomato and tobacco and to the pepper plants which is also why you should wash your hands between handling those two things too is that urban? I, know that. I feel like that's just. <laughs> you can actually, just like that Simpsons episode, you can cross tobacco and tomatoes. Yeah, yeah, they're all very close. Anyways, David, did you, were you what was your? Yeah, I, I was. Like uh, I was just gonna keep going on. I know you're good. All right. Uh, so once you got your soil here, technically your tomato plant is ready to go. You can water it, and it's 100% ready to go. But. If you live in very, very like sunny, warm climates like the middle of Kansas, uh, something you can do to help mitigate the moisture loss from the soil is add a mulch on top. So that's going to help keep the moisture in the soil, um, and it'll also help prevent any kind of uh, growth like, uh, uh, God, grass, uh, any kind of weeds, but I mean it's already in a bucket. That's not really going to be too much of an issue. So it's really about keeping the moisture in the soil. So we'll just pull out a very, a very thin layer here. Not even, well, not even that thin. Just you know, half an inch layer. It also looks good. So I can't argue about that. All right. There we go. That's it. And there you go. Now you can put this out on a balcony. You can stick it out on your front porch. You can put it pretty well anywhere. And hopefully, as long as it doesn't you know, go haywire, you'll have tomatoes soon. Yay, tomato! Indeed, actually, these are already flowering, Mary. You gave us the good ones, the real good ones. Yeah, there, there, there's so many volunteers. <laughs> if anybody oh. else needs volunteer tomatoes, so um, I don't know if you guys, if you guys do this, but I got taught fairly recently. I have no idea what they're actually called, but between the branches and the stem of the tomato plant, they'll be like little tinier like suckers they call them if you pick those off of your plant it'll make your branches and tomatoes thicker and it'll grow better because it's not diverting resources to those little growths whatever the technical term actually is uh, it'd be like right between the stem and the branch is that like an axial bud or something yeah I, I feel like I learned about this yeah Pruning, pruning tomatoes is definitely a good idea. 
And also, like, uh, I think you can also, like, if it's, um, like, beef steak tomatoes or there's going to be, like, a bunch on a row, you could take one off green, make some fried green tomatoes, and then hopefully they'll get bigger. That's another idea. I was gonna say, yeah, you could absolutely like prune anything that's kind of dead off that plant. I mean, there wasn't much, but I figure we'll just we'll prune it and give it every good chance it can have. All right. So, yeah, DIY planners. Mary, are you ready to to show off um, the best damn irrigation system ever? Uh, oh, hi, hi, yeah. Okay. Let me. Uh, uh, okay, so I'm gonna go outside and hopefully it's not too um uh, bad. Hopefully the connection's okay, but just let me know if it's like unbearable. Um, because I'm gonna show you guys our new drip irrigation system and kind of talk you through like the DIY of that. Um, since it is DIY, it did require like the most new resources that we've completely bought for, for this entire, like kind of a lot of new stuff. But uh, yeah, let me turn the camera around, is that okay? Okay, uh, so this is our drip irrigation system. So this is half Ooh. of it and then we have two more rain barrels on the other side. So we have the downspout coming in here. And these actually, we got these off of Facebook Marketplace. They're $25 each. Um, and they used to carry like hot dog casings, which is like intestines. I have, um, yeah, I actually have that exact one is my, is on my pig water, is a barrel yeah. used for, for bratwurst casings. They're fantastic, yeah, I can't think, recommend them enough. I think that there's a place in Junction City. But anyways, uh, yeah, so these are really good. They're 65 gallon drums and they're pretty durable. So we just have, this is kind of holding it down, but we just cut out. Um, a little spout and put a flexible downspout into that so that it could um, get in there but like trying to reduce the amount of open space so that mosquitoes can be limited and so then we have once this one fills up then it'll drill it'll drain over and fill up the other one too um, and then on all of them we have spigot that and we used um, a silicone caulk in order to secure both the spigots and the um, PVC that's holding them together. So then um, the big thing with drip and also with irrigation in general, if you are not going to have, which we kind of wanted it to be passive, both just for like to reduce the electric need for it and also just for ease, um, pressure is going to be a huge thing. And so one of the best ways to get pressure is uh, just using gravity, like water towers. Um, so actually we've learned that these kind of need to be up higher than they are. Because <laughs> um, we're not getting, th this is all new, so it's not getting to the end of our garden. So we need to rig either these up much higher or we need to figure out a pump situation. Um, but all of that to say, uh, oops. It's still doable, it's just like pressure is something that's really important to consider. And, and we tried to get them as high as possible and it still needs to be higher. So these are the same, what Justice was talking about, they're um, mineral buckets. Um, and they have, uh, uh, I'm, what am I thinking of? Cinder blocks, cinder blocks like these stacked up under them um, in order to provide support. And then we also got these little tea filters because with rain barrels, you're gonna get a lot of stuff, whatever comes down the downspout. So you wanna be sure to have some filter. And then we just have a conventional garden hose going around. You, that's another thing you want it to be as short as possible so that whoop, it doesn't, um, as the longer the hose, the less pressure you're gonna have. I'm, I don't remember the actual thing, but a certain number of feet, it's like, equivalent to reducing a PSI. So coming over here, here we have the attachment garden hose to a converter into a half inch poly um, tubing. And then we have an L going here. 
And then here is our system, which goes all the way down the main part of the garden. Um, so basically we have, since we kind of have a pretty chaotic garden, <laughs> um, instead of having like emitters go directly to certain plants, we just space it evenly two feet because, oh, kill a mosquito. Um, the stats that we learned was that large rooted plants you can have them be a foot away from the emitters in drip irrigation and small plants you want them six inches away. So we place them two feet apart so that the furthest away a plant will be is a foot away. Um, and then we planted, we put emitters every foot. So this is our emitter. Um, this is just kind of the classic uh, drip emitter that, that will puddle up here, spill out on all sides of it. Um, there's lots of different emitters, um, and these are two gallons per hour. So that's the important thing. So um, yeah, there's five emitters on this side because it's smaller, seven emitters on this side. Um, so it's seven feet and five feet. And yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it as far as this goes. Uh, we have really good pressure on the first part of the bed and less and less pressure going towards the end but much, we're working on it so how, how much further would you need to raise the uh barrels to get adequate pressure all the way through like optimally you know i'm not i'm not actually fully sure i took irrigation last semester right before i graduated so i'm gonna look into doing some actual proper calculations um but, but I'd have to look it up, but about every foot, you're going to get a certain amount more of pressure. So the higher you could get it really in this situation, we're kind of limited by like how we like the weight of having and the ease of having suspended 65 gallon drums. Um, yeah, but we're going to try to see how high we can get them. Um, yeah, and this is the other one comes from those rain barrels over there. We actually cut, we had this really long black hose and we cut it in half to be the proper length that it can just go, and this one's actually undone. So we should really have this taped off, but I wasn't the one who did so. Um, but yeah, one thing with drip irrigation is it can get clogged really easily if it's there's open wounds, basically. So you wanna make sure that everything is closed off um, to prevent clogs. Um, but yeah, this will just plug right in. Actually, that's why this it's not, it doesn't have the um, post thread on there, but we'll just get that and then it'll do the other half of the garden. Um, so yeah, another thing that we're learning is that so we have two, two drums on each side, but for one watering, one drum it isn't going to be enough. We're going to need to use both in order to like fully soak the soil. Um, because of how big the garden is. So, uh, it really it's one watering is in two of these things. So, um, hooray for climate change and more unpredictable weather. Maybe one day we could have had... I'm getting attacked by mosquitoes, sorry. I'm like trying to kill them. Um, <laughs> in another time, Maybe it would have been easier to have more regular veins and anyways. But Kansas is always a never mind. Okay. That's all. That's awesome. That that's yeah, awesome. That's, that's, that's incredible. It's interesting that you're talking about how in your irrigation class you have like an equation for like feet and height and like piping because like in my transport phenomenon class, like we we also did a lot of like oh, you have a giant bucket of water, you want it to go this far, what's the pressure? Like, that was drilled into my brain. So it's cool that, like, we're learning the same stuff, but for very different reasons. Yeah. Hey, that's great. Yeah. That's uh, really cool. Uh, talking to the chat here, does anybody have any questions? I know I posted that, uh, that question in chat. Nobody's responded yet, but also maybe people just aren't uh, aren't looking at chatting. So yeah, if you have any questions, either about the tomatoes, the irrigation, or the upcoming project, just throw them in chat. Don't be don't be shy. There are no bad questions. 
They're only stupid answers, and those answers come from me. So, you know. I feel like that could be another one of your openers. We have, <laughs> I eat questionable food, and now we have, there's no such thing as a dumb question, only stupid answers that come from I'm I'm full of terrible terrible lines. This is this is absolutely and true. And half baked, half baked ideas. Half baked, half baked ideas. We should put together a, a David Woods book. <laughs> oh, oh, I don't so make things. I just have like a a cartoon version of you on the front, and you're like with your most scraggly of beards and your most like scraggly of shorts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Life lessons from David Williams. Yeah, from David. <laughs> there you go. All right, An cool. angry ball. All right, so I guess we'll, we'll go on to the last uh, little DIY project, which, yep. of all odd things, is a bee house. Woo! Somebody's making yeah. a bee house and didn't we tell We love bees. All right, Look, I had an hour before, okay. before the stream started. Well, two hours. Before the stream started to get DIY, ideas. I was literally going to find someone to partner with for the sustainability thing to get ECM bees. I wanted to get a beehive. Well, this isn't an aviary bee house. This is for um, uh, what's the word? There's like solitary bees that oh, we are okay. building. Oh, the, one of those for. deals. Yeah, I, one I of. I can get at Home Depot. Like I've I've seen those at like Home Depot or something. Yeah, basic bee homes. Because native bees are cool too, but yeah, Avery's are epic. That'd be awesome. I wish that we could just make one of those in one of our. Are we allowed to have one in town? Absolutely. There's tons of people that have bees. Dude. In town. Okay. I'm like one yeah. degree of separation away from like the beekeeping association in town. Oh like my, my old roommate sat in on all of their meetings, kept trying to get me to come, but I was always busy or sick or something. I think my job at ECM, my job at ECM next fall is probably going to be like a community project of my own devices. Do you think you can let me start an aviary at East? You can so always good. ask. Uh, a lot. I think that'd be great. I think that we should try. I mean, like, I'm still working on the cold frames, but. If we're going to make the apiary, we got to go hard on creating a native environment instead of that grass. Like, yeah, it's, it's real. Really bad. I mean, I can, we can it's, get dirt, and we can, put, uh, we can put as many flowers along that fence line as you want. Uh, all I'm doing is um, just covering it up right now. I'm getting the seeds. We can go get that compost, and we can lasagna mulch, and we can yeah. grow a prairie. Is buffalo grass native up here? I know it's native. Yeah, down I'm pretty. Right. I'm pretty sure it is. Okay. Is that the type of grass we have, or is it a fescue? Oh no, we have we have something gross on our lawn right now. Um, I think it's burn. fescue. Probably. Okay. But at least it's hey, at least it's not Bermuda grass, because then we would never be successful in doing anything. <laughs> I've been pulling. I've been pulling Bermuda grass out of my garden for the past three weeks. I hate that stuff. Man, so. someone should sue whoever decided Bermuda grass would be cool. <laughs> I mean, I understand why it's good for lawns, but lawns in general kind of suck. Woo! So. Plant clover. <laughs> Plant lots of clover. Cover crops. It's good for bees. Yeah. Good for your feet too. They're so soft. It's pretty. Okay, cool. David, you, okay. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. No, I was going to say, David, I think you were going to say... I was just... Go. Okay. All right. Um, so, I had... I don't know. I think we decided to do the secondary DIY project about literally an hour before the stream started. Maybe an hour and 15 minutes. Uh, but this is going to be a bee house made entirely of crap I have pulled out of our basement. So crap being a technical tubing, term. Crap being a technical term. Cardboard tubing. Uh, I've got some three quarter inch uh, pipe or PVC pipe. I've got some inch and a quarter PVC pipe. Um, mm. Don't really want to use these, but if we need to kind of finish out having stuff in the the B, we have uh, toilet paper tubes. I really don't want to use that. Um, I, I don't know. Did I, I said we had these paper t these paper tubes, uh, but 
they're pretty thick. They're pretty actually good cardboard. Uh, and I cut them in half because I didn't really want to be cutting out. I only have a handsaw, so I don't have a table saw. So cutting out all of this by hand already makes it look janky enough. I didn't want to do big, long cuts like that. It just wasn't going to work out well. Okay, so yeah, when I show you the finished product, it's going to look real crappy. <laughs> but it'll work. Great. The bees don't care what it looks like, they just care if it works, and that's what counts. Yeah, okay. So what we'll need is we'll need two side pieces. I think these are about six inch, six and a half inches long. I have honestly no idea how tall it is. Um, it's the width of the board, and I want to say it's probably, it's probably, oh god, I don't know. Hold on, I, I'm an idiot. I have a, a ruler here. All right, it's exactly a foot tall. Okay, so these are going to be our sides. Then I have uh, the back panel, and this is only like four or five inches wide, uh, and it's basically just wide enough to have three of these fit in here okay. Um, I wanted a more vertical look as opposed to wide. Uh, don't ask me why, that's just what I chose. Um, and then I have a top piece and a bottom piece. And this is all we need to build a bee house. So it's actually quite simple and honestly not a huge pain in the butt. Um, so the first thing that you would want to do is if you have these long foot long tubes, cut them in half or however long you want them to be. Uh, if you want a slightly deeper bee house, I don't know the optimal length. Mary, uh, Amelia, do either of you know the optimal length for a, a, uh, for a mason bee? Uh, I think there's, okay, so yeah. there's is this the thing about six inches? Like, if you all make them longer than six inches, they all turn out as guys? It is. I think it is something like that. I think six okay. inches. Okay. So, during the sustainability retreat with England, we had, like, a really epic discussion about these, which will be on our YouTube channel, hopefully before the end of summer. Woo! I'll get off. Um, but... Uh, just take into consideration when you're making a bee home that we're making a home for this little creature and they have needs too. Um, and if you don't meet their needs, you are kind of like tricking them into a false sense of security and they will die. So, do some research! Yay! Um, these I, are I didn't have time complex. to do research. So That's fair. Yeah. yeah. Yours seems but, really good, though, that it's about about six inches deep, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Do they need to be shorter? No. Because I have PVC cutters as well as a uh, box cutter here. I can make these different lengths. I think I six think that, inches is right where you want to be. Yeah. I, I think really? that the actual the differentiating one is we've talked about um, having different size holes, different like size holes. So that, because different species like different width of holes, right? So, yeah. um, having okay. a variety of sizes can be a good thing. Or like two I or three. I lucked out on that. What? Oh, okay. I totally lucked out I was going to say, if you don't have it, I don't think it matters that much. But for folks who yeah. are watching this and are getting inspired. Yeah. Um, so also, I, I'm using like... Uh, I don't know, half inch chipboard here, which is probably not the best thing to be building a bee house out of because it is not extremely sturdy, not by a long shot. So what you likely want to use is something more like uh, untreated two by eight or something that's a lot thicker and a lot sturdier. Um, and then actually use a table saw to cut it so you get proper cuts. Uh, but this worked in a pinch. All right, uh, so we're just going to put it together. Honestly, um, I would encourage you, I, I can't, I literally can't uh, glue these together. If, um, because as, as all of you, I'll show you guys it real quick. So as you can see, not everything kind of fits in beautifully. <laughs> it was a very janky cut. Um, so I wouldn't be able to glue these together and then screw them in. So right now, I basically did my best judgment and I drilled holes uh, through. I drilled holes through all the wood so I can uh, I can screw these wood pieces together without splitting them. So you'll see why I've got uh, screws here. Basically, all I did was.
take this, kind of know where I would be screwing, and then just go straight through. And then on these side ports where I'd be screwing into it, because you don't want the board splitting, uh, I also drilled down in there. Um, so that, that helps your screws set better. It also helps it from you know, breaking apart. So good stuff. And now I've lost a screw. I'll, I'll, I'll probably put my knee in it somewhere. Oh well. No. I have more. No, no. I'm not saying I'm going to do it on purpose. There it is. I just said it was likely. Don't do it by accident either. <laughs> I found that it. That doesn't make it any better. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. So I'm gonna I'm gonna screw this together and uh, like I, I did this all by memory. Um Basically, it just needs to be a box that has one open end and covers the top so that whatever you're putting on the inside, it doesn't get rained on. Um, you can make this a lot nicer too. This is a very, very simple, quick build. Oh. Yeah, I'll try not to hurt myself, but I can't guarantee you that. So while I'm uh, kind of assembling the basic start here, uh, does anybody want to kind of talk about like why building this is a good idea? Um. Well, uh, there's these things called plants, and they feed us. They feed you and me, and they feed the animals that we eat, and most everything on Earth. neat little anecdote. Um, all these greenhouses were trying to figure out ways to pollinate tomatoes. 
Um, and they figured out that the pollen can only get in the flower of a tomato plant if it's vibrating at a certain frequency. So they had to invent this huge apparatus, like a box with a bunch of long needles of wires coming out of it that would vibrate. They could take the pollen from one end and stick it into the little flower and it vibrate just the right frequency to have the pollen go in and fertilize the flower. Somebody took a look one day and went like, and they figured out that that vibration frequency was just the exact same as like the common bumblebee. So they just started putting bees in their greenhouses instead so they didn't have to have all these workers sit there and pollinate all these flowers one by one. They could just have bees do it. Oh my god. That's like you could so my god. I feel like society does that sometimes. Like we're like, okay, like we have to have it. We, we have, have to have this, this. so we're gonna like, create this crazy way to do this when like nature had a way all along and we just destroyed it, trying to do it our way, and now we're up a creek. One other cool thing, this is not really properly related, but regarding bumblebees and greenhouses, I've learned that um, the re another reason that you have to use bumblebees in greenhouses is because Greenhouses block out UV light, and like honeybees and other types of bees are like useless. Like they need UV light in order to do that, so they have to use like C. Yeah, yeah. Or the I think they'll just die. Or but probably C. Go blind and die. Yeah, because the bees' uh, vision is at a oh. different. And, um, yeah, you can see um, most insects, I think. That's why red lights don't attract insects, is because they don't see red and infrared. But they can see more ultraviolet, ultraviolet hues than, than we can. Their visible spectrum overshoots ours in that direction. Man, I wonder what it feels like flowers would look like to a fly. That's what I was going to... I, I think people try to reconstruct it, actually. I've seen some people try and do it, but apparently they're like way, way more colorful than they would be yeah. us. And it's not for us. It's yeah. For, it's for bugs. That's what I was going to say. I never... It isn't for us. It's for them. Yeah. That's insightful. Okay. So, as you guys can see here, I've constructed a box. Like I said, it's very simple, very rudimentary, and because can anybody else see David's other camera? Because I can't. I can't. I, can't. I just pretend. Okay. It's coming in somewhere. We'll fix it. I on guess this yeah. Trip. You guys would have to see it on this one. Yeah. Uh, okay. But as all you can see, it's just a very rudimentary box. Uh, you also can also watch the stream if you really want to take a look at it. Just pull the stream up on your computer. Um. Yeah. This basically is just going to house the tubes, and we want a nice flat back here because we want to put the tubes up against it. So we want, uh, apparently the mason bees do not like uh, openings on both sides. They want to feel like they can close off the, the entrance and be protected, like most people. Okay, so we've got the box made. Um, we'll go ahead and just start putting the tubes in. Now, you'd have to glue these in somehow. Uh, a good wood glue, uh, kind of just heavily applied, would be okay, I'd say. Um, unless somebody's going to tell me that that's terribly wrong, uh, but I don't know, I've never seen wood glue be necessarily like harmful to bees. I'm not sure, I don't know actually. Uh, I mean, I, I think, think most wood glue is not toxic. And I feel like it does serve a good purpose of helping I tried it a bit because water and mildew and mold are pretty harmful. So, so I mean, unless, you Google, it, yeah, unless, unless you Google it, yeah, unless you Google it and it says it kills them or gives them cancer, then I think it's probably don't, don't give your bees cancer, folks. Don't don't do it. I am strictly anti-bee cancer. I'll make that statement. We'll go out on a limb here. I'm going to be cancer. Too many bees. Cancer. Too many I'll be cancer. My hot take. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Stand against bee cancer. Awesome. Glad I went and got that other PVC pipe. Because this actually kind of fits really well. Um, Alright, awesome. 
So yeah, once uh, once you have it in there, and everything's kind of shoved into the back real nice. You'll get the you'll get this kind of really awesome, really disturbing uh, looking just holes, holes upon holes upon holes, and I forget exactly what it's called, but there it, something about it. There's like literally a fear about pictures exactly like this. Um, yeah, I. I and so some some people. What? Like that, I have a friend that put like that, that like holes and, and like. Yeah, yeah, it's like, like I, I don't, don't get, get it, it, but it's like a... I'm going to have to drill so much after this episode. Zero <laughs> holes. Does wood glue give these cancer? Well, well there's, there's one more thing, thing too. Oh, oh, well, the, the night shades. Can you give your plants diseases with a cigarette? Um, that's... I, I will say I learned that in my other classes. Well, I don't know. I don't know. That seems pretty, pretty real. real. What's the secret one? Yeah. Yeah. All right, now, so once you have uh, all your tubes in there, you can go, uh, if you're able to attach this easily, you can go put this up on a, like a wooden post somewhere out in a pasture, uh, attach it to a tree. Um, you can kind of put it anywhere, and hopefully the bees will move in, uh, as long as you haven't done anything too crazy to it, I'd say. Um, but if you're in the middle of the city and you don't want to necessarily attach it to say like the side of your house, what you can do is you can take a, like a three-quarter drill bit and you can drill a hole right through the top and then you take a piece of nylon rope and you'll feed both ends through it and you'll pull the ends out and you'll tie a big knot and this will allow you to literally hang it anywhere you want to. I think, um, to further Amelia's point earlier, um, with, with, like, the water and creating, like, a protective home for it, it might be good to think about, um, like, an overhang or a shelter so that, uh, it doesn't, it isn't as susceptible to, like, rain and the elements. That yeah. might be I was just going to get to that. Oh, sorry. So I was no, 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 you're fine. You're absolutely right. I mean, uh, you can already see a bit of a flaw in my plan there, which is great. Um, so what you'd want to do is, again, you'd want to use copious amounts of, like, uh, either caulking, which we use to seal up houses uh, or something, and you would have to make this watertight. And that will prevent water from getting in. And you can do it on the top. You don't have to do it inside the bee house. Just use a lot. But yeah, set it up. There you go. Now you can hang this literally anywhere. That's actually impressive. We should hang that one else. Yeah, that looks really good. Yeah. Yay! Yeah. 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 That was our last DIY, wasn't it? Yep, that was it. Now you guys know how to save the world with stuff you have at your house. Hooray! Or I can show for restaurant. Well, probably not the variation. That one's um, advanced learners, but... Just, next time you go to McDonald's, just ask for the pickle buckets. Yeah. You take anything else McDonald's else. does their pickles in bag. McDonald's, quite what? fun. They do bag pickles. Go to Sonic. Go to Sonic. Next time you go to Sonic, ask for pickle buckets. Bag pickles. Not really, but. Speaking of things that McDonald's does, I learned this weekend that they cover their fries in beef tallow. Did you know that, Amelia? No, uh, I was they, a vegan. They don't anymore. Like a year and a half, I still ate their fries, so, oh well. Yeah, I, I've i eaten their fries all these days. I, 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 are, are you going to stop eating their fries? Um, Probably. Probably. I, I don't believe they do anymore. Uh, I thought they oh. used a vegetable oil. Uh, it was one of the reasons why why people say that uh, McDonald's fries used to taste better because they cook them in beef tallow. Um, so they oh. stopped doing it. I want to say they cook them in like a vegetable oil now. Okay. Because the uh. exact scenario you were talking about, people thought they were vegetarian and they absolutely weren't. Yeah. Man, people thought they were vegan and they weren't. We thought they were just harmless potatoes and salt. 
Grace and a little bit of oil. Uh, and we are so naive. And it's not a big deal. This is I know. A trick. According I to McDonald's. I'm oh, sorry. Okay, okay. Okay, according to McDonald's. They say that their their fries are cooked in a non-hydrogenated blend of sunflower and rapeseed oil, which is 100% suitable for vegans. Now, this is McDonald's we're talking about, so you can take that with a grain of salt. Uh, oh, but, salt. Uh, oh, well, there was no pun intended there, but I'll take it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I'd say unless that McDonald's is being very shady, they're likely, you're, you're okay to eat the fries. Okay. Well, I have learned twice this weekend. <laughs> I learned. Every Friday, yeah. Um, interesting. Okay. Um, yeah, are we ready for, like, announcements and stuff? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah we can absolutely talk about that yeah. stuff. Okay. Well, I was just going to give a shout-out to anybody in the chat if they have any announcements. Or during oh. Redwood Live, I like to say if you have it. You know, Find words to share, whatever. I don't know what I say. Something like that you can put in the chat. But on this Thursday at 6, I'll be on for Radio Food Live, 6 p.m. What are you making this week? I was just thinking, I don't remember. <laughs> um, and I don't it's a surprise. Oh, oh, we're doing, I, sorry, I don't remember what the main thing is, but we're doing the dessert puddings, which I'm so Ooh, excited the Noah's Ark pudding. I remember yes. looking. I might have to come to town today. <laughs> <laughs> I have to... According to our um, our Google sheet, it's uh, lentil and quinoa wraps. Lentil, okay. Ooh, that sounds good. That sounds good. Spicy quinoa lentil wraps. Spicy. That's Ooh. Different. In other announcements, uh, next stream for this uh, is in a week from now, like always. And I think we're doing like an outside edition where we're really gardening. That'll be fun. I'm really excited. Well, for yeah. next week. <laughs> we we need to, we need to do some work for that and figure out how we're going to do that. Um, so, yay! Hooray, work! Are there any questions awesome. in the chat? Uh, no, nobody's asking any questions. Uh, oh well. You know, Speak I now guess, for I guess we were good. Alrighty, well, farewell, <laughs> fair humans. All right, then. All right. Bye. Yep, everyone. Bye, Have a great night. Bye. Bye. Save the bees from cancer.